Okay, hello everybody. Uh, this is uh, Brett here. We're gonna dive in here in a minute. Uh, Joe is out. He's uh, feeling under the weather, change in temperature, and all of those things. And people are still logging in and getting admitted. So I'm um, just taking a scan out here of the news. I was looking at charts here this morning, but um, not a lot going on here. We're sort of uh, in in no man's land as uh, things kind of. It settled out after the big rally we had over the last few weeks. And let's see. So this is Crypto Panic. Uh, it's kind of a good news aggregator. And so, you know, probably won't spend too much time on the news here today because I'm not seeing a whole lot happening. And, uh, you know, Korean hackers, the usual. Uh, $100 million crypto heist. Isn't it funny how we're so desensitized that this is sort of a, not a big deal? But um, actually, it relates to Avalanche. We can have a look at this. And yeah, so this is actually, uh, you know, I do want to talk about the possibility of a, um, another drop here. Uh, okay, so let's dive into this. And basically, uh, you know what? Yeah, CNBC, if you have an ad track or ad blocker on, it doesn't let you look at it. And I'm just, I'm just tired of supporting these sites that require you and force you to watch all their obnoxious ads. So, you know, we don't need to look at that. All right, so, and uh, just got a message from somebody, head and shoulders for me on the Bitcoin four-hour chart. So uh, I have all these great trader friends kind of shoot me things here. So we'll take a look at that for sure. And, um, you know, today's class, by the way, if you're wondering if you're new, what the difference between these classes and tomorrow's class is, tomorrow we have, we look at all of the charts we every every week look at the longer term. We go into more detail, and we have that active trader basket. And today is a little bit of news, more for beginners, and uh, we'll take Q and A, and also look at uh, some movers, and really answer questions on the indicators. So it's kind of a little bit slower paced. And so certainly, if you guys have any questions, uh, it's more interactive. Feel free to go ahead and chime in on that. So this is talking about key support zones. I mean, this is something I posted yesterday here. This is Ethereum uh, Bitcoin, but it looks just like the Bitcoin chart. There's, you know, we're coming up into this wedge and resistance. And so, yeah, it's descending triangle. So I, you know, I'm just going to kind of skim through this. I haven't seen much looking around here this morning. If you guys want to look at anything, uh, Dogecoin, uh, we can look at it. I, I sort of temporarily added it to our, uh, active trader basket, but um, I mean, I, I'm not a huge fan of the project, but hey, I'll, we'll trade anything if there's opportunity. So, Ethereum based gaming altcoin. Now, I'd already opened this up here. Uh, okay, actually, this one, and some people are calling for a big bull trap. So, you know, I make my own analysis, but I like to know what other people are saying and kind of get some consensus. And sometimes too much consensus is dangerous, like, it, you know, well, and that's sort of. Um, it, you know, doesn't need to be said that way. It, consensus is too many people thinking one thing. So that's dangerous in and of itself. And so uh, let's uh, take a look at that. I'm going to close a few things on my other monitor here because I'm trying to pull up the chat for you guys just so I can see it. And there, there's the chat. And Okay, we're ready to go. So to mute for a second. Hopefully that worked. Um, Ethereum-based gaming altcoin suddenly erupts. Uh, which one is it? Uh, Axie Infinity. Okay, we'll definitely look at that. All right, let's dive in. Kind of take a look at things here. So um, let's pull up Axie. Uh, this is the chart here. Let's see. We'll look at Cpool and some of these other ones. Where's the one with that? Yeah, this is the one I wanted to show you. So this is the weekly. We're getting overbought on things. And, uh, you know, this is a pretty serious key resistance area. And so it's running out of steam on the weekly chart. I think we, we should see some kind of a pullback here and if not something deeper. So this would be an area to kind of take profits. It's possible to push higher. This 25K is that 200 week moving average. And so which gave us very strong support in the past and uh, here and here and here, but is now going to act as resistance, right? So let me get rid of these. And so I think it, the risk favorable thing to do here is at least sort of leg out of positions. 
Um, and let's see, I'm just kind of eyeballing something here, see if that's worth drawing. Not really. I mean, we're this trend line here, uh, we are kind of above that, probably should draw it more like that. So it's kind of like this symmetrical triangle being drawn here. But I think more importantly, we have this strong overhead resistance here and then that 200 week moving average. So the line in the sand is 25K. And so if we push up here, you see, I have my alert already set at 24.5. If we push up to 25K, I think that would certainly be a profit taking point and that we'd pull back down on things. So I did actually want to touch on that other article, though, the the bull trap. So, uh, you know, the daily hodl, all of these are sort of designed to kind of capture eyeballs. So pseudonymous, pseudonymous, is that how you say that? Pseudonymous <laughs> analyst. Uh, that's not a word I've had to say recently. Uh, I think it's pseudonymous, probably. Right. OK, SAT word. But uh, essentially, you know, these guys let's see longer artificial pump, bigger or aggressive. I mean, it does seem odd that this thing dropped and bounced so hard um, from here. And so the potential bottom that we had been looking at here prior to this is that twelve thousand five hundred. He has it at between eleven and twelve thousand. But I think it's twelve twelve five if we do see a capitulation. And, uh, you know, this bounce has been on lower than normal volume here. So we do have to be very careful here. And these bear market rallies are suspect. So while we called the bottom and uh, we, we caught a nice push up here, you know, this it could be the resumption of the upward trend here from the pre FTX collapse. So we could see these lower highs if we sort of erase this here and we drew a trend line from here to here. And uh, that would be, okay, we're back to before that. But I don't think that's reasonable. Just because they found $5 billion doesn't mean things go back to normal. And so this, what this more likely means is the sellers were exhausted, more shorts were piling in and the uh, exchanges, here's the thing, and I know this isn't my chart, but the exchanges, they know they're about to get clobbered if the prices are gonna dump. And so they, um, usually are holding a lot of coins and, and um, you know, to sort of allow price to move up by withholding or placing buy orders uh, or sell orders rather over onto the B book. There's an A book and a B book. Most people don't know that. They can kind of allow price to go up higher by kind of withholding sell orders until they want to dump the market. So um, this is uh, something we want to keep in mind here. Now, this chart here shows kind of the wave pattern that pushes higher up to that 24,500, call it 25K um, region, but then what, right? So uh, yeah, so Elliott wave. I don't do a lot of Elliott wave. It's, uh, I think I, I see everything kind of beforehand with other, other indicators. And so we don't want to get too far into that. And um yeah, so so that covers that. We have the that Ethereum Axie Infinity. We covered the news here. Certainly, if anybody sees anything else that you want to look at, uh, we can we can take a look at that and news this North Korean hackers, you know, aka Kim Jong Un, you know, state supported hacking enterprise. Lovely. So, yeah, <clears throat> but U.S. crypto firm heist hundred million dollars, and. Um, largely being brushed off. I don't know. So it is what it is. Another hundred million gone. What's a hundred million among friends after billions and billions with FTX? Uh, it's a sad state of affairs, but uh, that we are so desensitized to this that uh, we ignore it. But just to finish that thought here, uh, see, um, <clears throat> pardon me, that uh, is issuing a warning saying crypto rally is not going to end well for crypto bulls. Well, you know, I've been hearing this. I'm not seeing that, at least not yet. But um, so I'm dubious about this claim. But he says he thinks that the real organic demand is not responsible for the strength in crypto markets. Basically, what I just said that uh, the you know exchanges whales could have uh, allowed and pushed price up here to get everybody in to then short the markets and dump it down. And again, to the point I was making. Uh, with the exchanges, if they know they're going to get clobbered when price wants to go lower, they'll 
they'll wipe out all the shorts. We saw the massive liquidations on the shorts right in here, and they're pumping price up to get all of us long so that maybe they'll wipe out a lot of the longs. So I'm hearing more of that from various people that I'm watching. But at the end of the day, I trust what I see. So it's certainly worth being cautious here. And uh, and keeping an eye on things, but um, we'll we'll kind of weigh both of those, right? So I would suggest not being all in on this. There's a lot of open space here for a correction, at least, and you can see this wave four here on the Elliott wave. But at the very least, we should pull back to 21k. Uh, I'm going to hop over to the four hour briefly. Excuse me, I have to clear my throat there uh, because. Now, this friend saying head and shoulders on the four hour. I don't see that, though, unless we kind of zoom out on that. Let's take a look. And what is he talking about? What is he talking about? Well, let's, all right. So saying 19,100 uh, target. Oh, I see. Well, sort of. I, I mean, you could make that argument left shoulder, head, but I don't see it until it breaks, until it, in, unless it breaks into the 21 to 50 day moving average, you know, we're fine. I think we go higher. I think he's wrong. And I'll be sure to tell him because uh, that's how uh, don't you guys have your, probably your trading buddies and you have like a kind of friendly rivalry going on. And uh, it's always fun to be right, but uh, it's always good to weigh other opinions. And so, Oh, uh, by the way, this is Haven Coin. I just happened to jump on it. I think we're, you know, we're still Haven Coin, still looking good. Nice big rounded bottom, pushing higher. I think we're still good to go for our dollar twenty target. Uh, you know, as long as we can hold sixty cents, and that's why I just don't see the weakness in this. Um, we're going to look at both sides, but uh, in terms of the uh, likely next steps, um, this here on Bitcoin, you know, it does look like it's running out of steam, and we pull up our and we're overbought on the uh, trend strength indicator here and also the ERI oscillator. Now, here's the thing to pay attention to also. Here's a nuance on the ERI oscillator. So do you see when this midline goes, turns from red and then there's blue and then there's green? Do you guys understand what that, uh, what that means? And, you know, we haven't really spent a lot of time on that, but since it's an interactive class um, and Brandon says, the more people that keep saying we're in for a drop makes me think a drop is less and less likely. Yeah, exactly, Brandon. It, it's that consensus theory. I don't like it when everyone's saying what I'm saying. And, and usually, I mean, not to brag, but I've us usually the first one to say it last year when I was saying we go to, to 14, 16, five and 14 and 12, five, you know, nobody was saying that. And then we hit 16.5, like I said, and then people started saying, hey, I think 14 and 12.5. But now, since so many people are saying it, I think uh, you're right. Like, uh, there's uh, the, the more consensus, the less likely. Crypto always does the most damage and does what the least amount of people think. Not to say that we're not going to have it happen. We're going to be careful. But um, coming back to this thought here, and hopefully you guys can see this. This is the oscillator version of the early reversal indicator. Uh, and so let me just bring it in a little bit. Okay. So the vertical lines are the ERI prints. It's the center line I want to talk, I want to point out. So it's red, it's blue, it's green. Now that reflects on the uh, Keltner channel that typically we have turned off. And what that means, stay with me, is that uh, there is a, the counter channel is similar to a Bollinger Band. And if yours is turned off, I, I see many of you have yours turned on. I have mine turned off just because, because I can see what it means by the middle line here. I'm confusing you, I'm sure. Watch what I'm saying. So if I go into settings, uh, the counter channel here, so I'll turn this back on. Now, the red oscillator version here, when it's red, it means price is above the Keltner channel. So do you see that? It, this is where it started to turn red and the price was above the Keltner channel. Now, like the Bollinger Band, it acts as a kind of a rubber band 
when things get overextended above the channel or below, it tends to pull it back to the median and very often to the other extreme. So in effect, all we need to see is, is I can turn off this Keltner channel because when this midline is red, I know it's above it and more likely to pull back. When it's blue, it's within the Keltner channel. And when it's green, it's below it and more likely to pull up. Do you guys see that? It's a little bit more advanced nuance of this. And in the end, you don't really need that unless we're forecasting what's likely to happen next. So what do we see here? Well, if we go back here, red above the Keltner channel, above the Keltner channel, all the way up here. So that was uh, the bull market. Now, you know, if we're clearly in, and this is why it's helpful to know what phase of the cycle we're in. So in the bull market of 2021, it rode above the Keltner channel almost the whole way on a weekly basis. Uh, so now we went into the bear market. But one of the uh, signals here is we started redlining the top here, overbought, overbought, and then we had the actual bearish ERI. So we nailed this, the top of the markets, and we will do so again. Uh, you know, I, I'm supposed to say nothing's 100% here. True. But. I will go on record saying when we see this align uh, with our uh, TSI going green to red, these are market tops, whether it's the market top or, but this one, to see how it was all the way up here at a hundred, the hundred line. Let me just open up the TSI here, all the way up here and see over to the right. I didn't quite get to hundred, but 99.3. See over on the right side, when they get all the way to these extremes and then reverse, these are the strong signals we have. Same thing at the bottom, July 2021 in the summertime. We, the ERI nailed the bottom there too and the top. I'm going to keep reminding you guys so that you trust these indicators. So, um, so with that in mind, when we have a bearish ERI and the TSI is bouncing off extreme high levels and then goes red, high, high probability we're reversing. Okay. So with that though, back to our example, what are where are we right now? We see the TSI, and I'll just make this a little bigger. TSI is red above the Keltner channel. Hopefully, guys, you can see this, and I don't have too much on the chart, but see the Keltner channel is this uh, blue pant, the blue lines. So we're above the Keltner channel. We're at strong resistance on the trend line, and we also have the 200 week up here. So if we see a pump, that would be a suspect pump. This not doesn't mean the bull market's back. That means that the uh, exchanges, the whales are trying to liquidate some more shorts to make some profits. And then they'll flip short up here, I imagine. Um, you know, doesn't say that it can't, you know, certainly possible that, that this thing has just been kind of erased, this whole FTX drop lower level, and then we're back in business. So that is possible. But, um, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm lecturing you guys. You get it. This is, uh, it's a danger zone. So I would be taking profits here and then in the 25,000 range, 24.5 to 25, you know, might get up to 25. Really the 24,500 would be a safe spot to be taking some off the table. I would not take everything off in case we do push up. But if we do, it would likely retrace to this, which would be a dollar cost averaging buyback point. Does everyone understand that? Now, this is a do as I say, not as I do moment because I did sell out of my um, IRA um, back here because I thought this was a significant resistance area and I thought, well, I'll wait for the pullback. So I am. Now I should have sold half here and kept half and maybe sold another half up in this region or and then kept another quarter for in case we shoot higher because we don't know, you know, we, we don't really know, but I would, you know, we waiting to buy back, if it were Ethereum, a pullback to 21,000 and only if our indicators start turning higher again. You know, I'm, I'm still being cautious. There are times when I'll set buy limit orders just based on price. Okay. But this isn't one of them. You know, if we are in for another downturn and some are saying a deeper crash, uh, you know, these lower accumulation zones are still on the table. I mean, I want to make that clear. 
So uh, we don't want to have a false sense of security. It's just that's not what I'm seeing in, on the indicators. And so, you know, on the indicators, just to be clear, this uh, isn't what I'm seeing. And so you might be saying, well, make up your mind. I'm like, I I'd like to, but this we will. Here's the thing. We'll have more confidence as we push higher on these. And so we touched upon this a little bit last week. The TSI in the uh, 2015 market pushed higher a bit, and then it pulled back down, still put a higher low on the TSI. Now, I, I, we didn't have the TSI back then, so it's a great tool for kind of pseudo backtesting. But uh, if we look at the prices back here, they did come back down and retest the lows Oh my God, yeah, the lows of $170 Bitcoin and, uh, and then before it launched again. Okay, so I, I feel more along the lines of based on a video I gave you guys yesterday with the hash ribbon indicators that, that we will probably hold this line and stay above 16,500, you know, but um, some places that have buy orders in would be if you have a little bit of powder dry, 14,000, 12, five, and then 10,000, you know, but I, I do feel like this thing is um, in recovery. The big wild card though, is the economy. We've got uh, digital currency group. Now I'll just touch on that. And um, that would be useful to see DGC news and then uh, GBTC. Now uh, just the, the, G, the TLDR on this, there's a risk of, uh, grayscale uh, having to scale uh, or, or digital currency group, we've talked about this, uh, having to sell its Bitcoin. And uh, however, the, the board controls this and uh, they require like a 50%. And, and basically, Barry Silbert has says, I'll sell my Bitcoin. We'll have to pry it from my dead cold hands. I don't know why I say one. I'll go away here. But so they're not going to want to dump their Bitcoin. Okay, so they are in in a big battle here to, gain, to maintain control of this thing. So this is certainly something that could tank the markets, but uh, I think it would be met with a lot of buying. There's a lot of money on the sidelines. So um, you know, there's really there's two sides of this thing, and so if they and they're continuing to fight the SEC to be allowed to convert the uh, GBTC, which is a trust. And uh, the world's largest Bitcoin only investment vehicle into a spot ETF. And, you know, the SEC for some reason is not allowing this, doesn't want to allow this. Meanwhile, other countries have them set up and are, you know, ha having the, the access to that. And, but maybe uh, they win and they get approved. I don't think that probably happens soon. Probably what would happen is they get. Um, I don't know. Uh, the powers that be probably want to push things lower and see this thing unwound so they can scoop in and, and get it and buy it or take it over. Um, so we don't need to unpack that any further. We just have to have a healthy degree of skepticism on these things. And so uh, let's, uh, any questions uh, on that? I don't see any. All right. So with that, Either way, what I would suggest is we're, we're due for a pullback here. If there's a push higher, I wouldn't trust it. It would probably sell back down. And this is the weekly. So we'll look at it on the daily. But again, we're overbought. We're above that Keltner channel in a downtrend. And here's another nuance, you guys. If we're in an uptrend, a strong uptrend, being above the Keltner channel is okay. It's kind of like a Bollinger Band. And the opposite is true if you're in an uptrend and you're below the Keltner band. See that? We saw a strong whipsaw back above it, back at the COVID crash. So here's a pop quiz. Have we been and are we still in a downtrend? The answer is yes. So uh, what we want to uh, be wary of is getting above that Keltner channel in a strong downtrend. More than likely, we will see a pullback and here we'll either hold support and break into the new trend channel or not. And then we go down. Now we do have support back here on 18,000, you know, 19,000 area at that 300 week moving average. So, you know, and then we'd be back 
maybe even below the Keltner channel. But um, these are the these are the possibilities here. So we want to be careful, and and that's what I want to you know our our sweet our our easy trades. Not that it's ever easy. Was the last two weeks, and when we I was saying, guys, this looks really good. Now I'm advising caution. Uh, this is the chart, by the way, that I put in the chat last night. You know, on the overall macro scale, I really think we are uh, looking pretty bullish. And uh, let me change this radar settings to the longer settings. And uh, I've started doing this as up to three months. I want to see these all align. You know, previously we were just going up to the month. And uh, but going to three months is the same as the quarter. And uh, yeah, so now the radar on a quarterly basis bearish, but the weekly and monthly are bullish still. So and the day, but the daily is bearish. So expecting some small pullback. And essentially, uh, this uh, diagram I put in the chat here in the signal is uh, would indicate we could push up here and pull back once more just like it has here the last two times. It didn't this time, had a little bounce and then it shot up at the 2018, 2019. I think it was mostly because it just ran up so, so straightforward and up like that. And then the pullback was more symmetrical, not like we've seen in this janky uh, last market cycle with the kind of double top there, you know? So anyway, um, so that's kind of a uh, bird's eye view. Uh, what we could do and just to follow along on the format of this class we've looked at the news uh, we can look at some indicator setups here on daily charts but uh and i'm just skimming through what the movers are a lot of things are pulling back uh c pool is up though and i told you guys yesterday c pool at least i think so this this was kind of a small rocket there so um shot up on that where could it go uh, not sure. I don't see any like clear resistance areas up in this range or a, an easy fib to draw. I guess we could do that, but I think that's a bit extreme here. We're not in a bull market. So doing a fib on this, uh, you know, it's not going to go all the way that high. This, this, you know, more realistically, we could draw this kind of thing in higher lows. But let's do this. Let's look at Axie Affinity because that could have some. A movement coming up here, AXS here, saw a big pump here two days ago. You know, um, this one does look pretty good. And I'll zoom out more. We'll draw a, okay, well, when in doubt, zoom out. Yeah, I was like, well, let me, let me zoom out further because what I was starting to see is, hey, we broke out of this uh, trend line resistance, which is true, but we're right up to the bigger resistance there. So, you know, I would uh, keep an eye on Axie. We do have a nice sort of velocity and slope on the crossover between the 21 and 50, but we've seen that reject before. So what we'd want to do here is put an alert here about $16 if, if and when it gets back above that uh, trend line resistance, you know. So, yeah. Okay, uh, then why don't we do this? Let's take a look at our... Uh, the uh, let's just skim some of these here. BAT breaking into a new trend channel. We looked at C pool. I'm only looking at what's green today. So what we could do here is uh, look at the the movers, and let's see the crypto pairs. The only thing with this is we have to kind of customize it. Anything uh, you guys want to look at in particular while I'm modifying this? Mm -hmm. and you guys are awfully quiet here well i'm going to uh, sort these but i want to uh, do top gainers and uh weed out some of the stuff that we don't need to look at and um I don't spend a lot of time in here, but uh, your date performance, six month, okay, overview. And um, yeah, so this is the column. Okay, so percent change. I don't really, um, percent is what I wanna look at here and then the exchanges. So I wanna limit this down to a couple different exchanges. Don't really need to see volume here on this. 
to kind of so we don't have as much information to look at high low i don't really care about i'll look at the high the price technical rating okay so there we go and in this case in terms of the exchanges i'm gonna just look at coinbase which has most of these i guess i'll do coinbase and kucoin because that has the other ones that we don't normally see don't really want to be sorting through all these like oki and huobi and all that all right so we have on a percentage basis 80 percent, 80 percent audio btc these are some uh, i don't really want to <clears throat> look at these small market cap ones these are dangerous right now let's see keep don't know none that i'm really familiar with so probably could have left volume on there solana pattern forming all right we'll take a look at solana alex uh icx this is one we sort of looked at last year i mean we are starting to see this is well yeah i guess it's dangerous to say i mean we're seeing that these things crossing over but this is why it's so tricky because we're in the phase of, and I'll pull it up again from our signal. Not sure if you guys paid attention to that, but in the phase of disbelief, like, uh, is this a sucker's rally, which is what people are saying. And that's usually when the, uh, the people get surprised and it kind of tears off into the stratosphere. So I'm actually on my other screen here trying to pull that up, but, uh, here, this one here. Okay. Uh, can you just let me know you can see this because sometimes the screen share it only shows like it doesn't show the whole window and um, get back to the chat chat yes all right thank you Cornelia so yeah so this here disbelief this is a soccer's rally sound familiar <laughs> everyone's in the news this is a soccer's rally. rally excuse me I have a hiccup there and so you know, the question is, are we here and we have a bigger dump with a market crash or are we really here? And I can't answer that. The indicators we have tell us, tell me that we are more likely here and uh, pushing up into the soccer's rally. But, you know, this disbelief, this rally will fail like the others. But that's kind of the thing here. You know, uh, we haven't. We're sort of in hope and then disbelief. It kind of feels like this to me. And my spidey sense is, you know, everyone else has been burned so many times. <laughs> There's that funny video with Sam and the orange. I think I predict this will be the Halloween costume of the uh, year here. Sam in an orange jumpsuit with a big wig on. Uh, anyway, and I don't mean to make light of it to anyone who lost money at FTX. It's just, uh, yeah, it is what it is, uh, unfortunately. But these charts would indicate that and here's why i say that show me the charts i'll tell you the news this would indicate smarter money you know there's smart money and then there's dumb money and then there's smarter money you know we we're smart people but we don't have access to all the information and the quants and the phds and the the bobby axelrods of the world um you know crypto is unregulated guys if you ever watch billions and and a uh, guy, Bobby Axelrod, says to one of his guys or his team says, are you certain? And they say, I'm not uncertain. That means they have inside information. And uh, in the U.S., that's illegal. In, in the world view of things, they're not policing this stuff. So when we start to see this, our, our, our footprints to follow are what we're seeing here. and. So the risk reduced trades are, and I'm not saying buy this CEK, I don't even know what this is, to so disregard that entirely. But in terms of a um, chart setup, you know, doing something like this with a tight stop loss is, is, is a worthwhile trade to me. If you like the project, I'm not saying go out and buy a bunch of shit coins because, you know, these will dump hardest if the market dumps. So let me just turn off KuCoin for a minute, see what, what Coinbase is showing. And those will be the more solid ones. And then we can go down the rabbit hole 
of some of these other ones. Yeah, see now we're back into kind of reality here. 28%. Uh, keep, I mean, we are seeing, I mean, guys, we are seeing some nice pumps here in the last few days. And uh, when in doubt, zoom out. So let me zoom out on this. The, the, the charts are telling me, you know, we have crossed this threshold. And it's not to say they can't reverse, but we, the trend is your friend, and we are in a new uptrend. So I'm a bit contrarian right now, and I'm not saying the sky is following, crash is coming, because I'm hearing too much of it, and I'm not seeing it. So... Take that for what you will, but, um, you, you know, depending on your investment status, I mean, certainly in this chart here, I'd want to see a pullback to support and then where's our indicators? Uh, you know, it's a bit overbought on the TSI. So, um, but this is also when we want to start paying attention to our key in a bell. And I know it's a bit confusing you guys, but we had a bell the other day. Had we been watching keep, a key and a bell would have been a great buy signal because look at that thing take off. So I'm going to add it to our watch list just to sort of follow the loop, not for the project itself, but more of learning the nuances of the indicators. Because as we go into a new bull market or a bullish trend in the bear market, you know, likely we're, we won't be in a bull market until 2024, more than likely. You know, we now have a uh, bullish kind of correction in a bear market. You know, some will argue we are, <laughs> some are still arguing we're still in a macro bull market overall. It just depends on the time frame, you guys. But in this kind of a, in a sense, when we start seeing this, so to be clear, if this pulls back to support on these moving averages and starts to turn higher like that, and we start seeing something like this, you know, a new trend channel. We really want to pay attention to our key and a bell indicators. Do you guys see that? So it's, we're, we're shifting how we're trading a little bit. Uh, so KS says there's also the dumb smart money in 2022. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's three arrows capital, many examples of that. So, but anyway, I do, I did want to stress this. So let's, uh, let's kind of come back through and see, you know, this class is really more about learning the indicators and how to find winners that up and coming, you know, and I'm not going to have time to sort of scour and continually search for these, but you guys might have more time. And um, cause I'm running the business and doing videos and things like that in classes, but I think it's worthwhile watching these. And so, you know, this is a great looking chart. I'm not going to lie. You know, it is has sold off here on the top side. Let's take a look at a weekly. Okay, resistance on the weekly. So that's why, yeah, and all red on the radar. So this will probably pull back in. So we, we still want to exercise caution on these, uh, and especially these smaller market cap coins that we don't know about. But the future high flyers may come out of these. That's ASM, same thing. We have NUG, um, bit of a pump there. New Cypher. Never heard of it. Niho. Anybody hear of this? But look at that trajectory on the daily weekly resistance. So, so I would suggest, hmm, I'm going to put it in our basket and I'm going to create a new area. And we have too many of these here, TSI up, down. I'll, I'll make a, a new, I'll kind of clean that up here. But I want to add a section and we're going to call this uh, micro cap. Uh, what do we want to call this? Incubators, micro cap. This micro incubate. I don't know. I can't think of a better word right now, but it, it, these are possibles or micro cap watch lists. Let's just do that. It's not really an incubator. All right. So now what we have as we have this NUGP. Uh, I'm going to have to move these other ones out of the way, but um, just for now, 
Uh, Dogecoin will come. We'll just move these out of the way. Axie Infinity, I'll keep. We've got Near. We had Near Protocol 3X, did well yesterday. ETH doesn't belong there. We've got uh, is Keep one of ours. Keep is one of these microcap thingies. All right, microcap watch list. So now we have this. Why am I watching this? Well, because if we can get up back up on these, we might be able to capture some really nice pumps. I mean, guys, it doesn't look like much, but from here to here is 100%. And in the last few days, these have gone up 140%. So this is interesting. I don't know what it does. Sounds a little spammy, but great looking chart. Not going to lie. Um, so ERIs don't have much volume. I should have the volume on these, you know, volume spikes. Now the KuCoins, you know, th these are going to be some interesting opportunities. Uh, maybe I need to carve out some time to just do a, um, micro cap analysis and skim through these, but I'll add, I'm going to add some of these to our list here. I'll just put them as blue because we're on Coinbase. So new GP, we have keep had a bit of a pump. I'd want to see a pullback on that AXS. So, you, you know, it's a, the goal of all this is so you get to a point where you're confident enough of pulling these up. It's just part of your routine. And you're like, bada bing, bada boom. Here's going to put some of these on my micro cap watch list. And hey, this is a bit overbought. But when it pulls back here, I'll put an alert here to, if it comes back down below this then that's when I'll be interested in possibly uh, buying this on a bounce. And then I'll come in here and I'll put a note to myself and say, buy on bounce and TSI. And you'll say, all right, the alert goes off. You come in, you read your notes and you just take the trade without thinking about it, putting a stop loss below the 21 to 50 day moving averages. You know, get to a point where your trading is emotionless. It's impossible to be cutting. Well, I won't say impossible. Hardened traders have no emotion. And they are trading probability. They're using sound risk management. But your goal is uh, to get to the point where you're less uh, emotional about things. Now, we have NUGBP. Let me replace it with this NUUSD because most of you are, are trading in USD pairs, most likely. So I'll add that to our watch list there. And it's strange I already had it in blue. So it, may, it must have had that on at one point in the past. So I'll delete the other one. Okay. Uh, the money goats. <laughs> yeah. um, is, that, is that what Three Arrows called themselves? The goats, KS? I don't know. Well, Tom Brady's no longer the goat. I, I just, no, I, I'm not even going to joke about it. I feel bad for him. Apparently he lost a lot in the FTX debacle. <clears throat> Let's see. Kava doesn't have enough of trading history. We don't want to look at this. Poly, unless I just have zoomed out way too far, which is possible. But you see these patterns, guys. I I didn't know what I was going to find in here. But we're discovering some really interesting uh, chart patterns here. Mm, but zooming out is always a good idea. Yeah, I mean... Tell you what, I'll, I'll set an alert on this over 25 cents because, you know, these things, when they hit the day trading rooms, if suddenly this spikes and these things starts riding up and the 21 to 50 day moving averages are going up, you know, it needs to get above the weekly 21. So we have some time on these. If we're right, it's not about being right, but let's just say if our hypothesis is right that we've bottomed and we're going to head higher. We've got some time on these. We want to buy in uptrends and pullbacks to support with stop losses. Why? This is why. FTX is why. DGC is why. GBTC is why. We don't know yet. Um, let's see. Yeah, KS says, I would not trust any exchange. Trust is a spectrum. That's a good way of saying it. Yeah, and you know you can build more trust with the indicators. Uh, so, but, um, keep large long-term holdings on hardware wallet. Yep. Anything you're going to hold and hold on to, you know, 65% of Bitcoin is held in long-term storage and hasn't moved for a long time. I, I heard that recently. So that should say something, but they have it on hard, hard storage wallets more than likely. 
I'll only keep on exchanges what you're actively trading. Exactly, KS. Let's see, I have some comments I missed here. Uh, let me catch up. Let's see, Saul, we'll get to that. Uh, Cornelia, and yes, can see the chart. Okay, yeah, you don't want to go, it's right. So how many different exchanges are you using and which ones do you trust? Yeah, and maybe that's what uh, KS was referring to. Tr trust is a spectrum, <laughs> but um, so, so, I'll answer that. I mean, I have accounts with Coinbase, Gemini, Binance US. I do have Bybit, but I stopped trading there because of the massive manipulation in 2022. Uh, KuCoin I have. And, you know, using VPN. Bitrix I was using, but not really holding anything there at this point. I only use those because they have some coins that you can't find anywhere else like uh, it used to be a uh, phantom coin, but then there was pirate chain phantoms on more exchanges now. <clears throat> so uh, which ones do I trust? None of them. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that. I, I think so. so I, I used to say Gemini. I'm a little concerned about this whole thing with Genesis and 900 million evaporating. If we were to see a market dump and another crash, I think Gemini could be in trouble. Coinbase is public. They have a lot of money. I am, for the record, on my desk, class action lawsuit against Coinbase that I'm joining. But that's not going to affect them and their longevity. I'm just saying that. Uh, uh, and by the way, if any of you were affected as I was in 2021, the summer of 2021, where you could not access your Coinbase account for two months, as the markets dumped, I lost 25k. Couldn't get in. Couldn't sell. They were they now that that's not usual. They were growing too fast. They couldn't support it. But if any of you um, have that happen and want, uh, you can reach out privately. I'll give you the information for the attorneys handling that. Uh, and, and what's interesting is, quick aside, I was uh, joined a prior Coinbase uh, class action lawsuit, and the attorneys wimped out basically. And they said, well, after reviewing the terms of service and all that, that everyone signs off, they agree to arbitration, which is true. But uh, when, you know, it never hurts to ask. So for some reason I went out back online and Googled a class action lawsuit Coinbase because, you know, it was upsetting to lose that much by no fault of my own. And um, other than trust Coinbase and uh, found another law firm. So I talked to these guys and they said, well, we're a bigger firm. We've got the, uh, the stones to pursue this. And the other one is kind of a little guy. So never hurts to ask for a second opinion, but enough about that. Um, and, and by the way, nothing against Coinbase. It is safe. I would say that I would trust it. Now um, it's just that period of time of fast growth uh, they, they couldn't handle it. And, um, a lot of people got blocked out of their accounts because they, they didn't know they didn't have fraud prevention really locked down and they were afraid of, they were phishing scams, et cetera. At any rate, I think Coinbase, they'll be, they'll be a survivor here. Binance us, I trust 73 billion in the recent months. I don't know what the exact number is now, uh, but they, uh, they're well capitalized. And they're not doing a lot of, you know, allegedly, we don't know, but apparently, you know, CZ is trusted saying they have all assets one-to-one -one and more. So I would say if you're US-based, Coinbase, Binance US, I still like Gemini. The answer is spread it around. You shouldn't have it all on any one exchange. And I also like um, MetaMask and Uniswap, to be honest, because they are less likely to, you know, it's, it's truly decentralized. And they, um, they're, they're less likely to have a hack and have the thing just evaporate. Uniswap, uh, MetaMask works with that. So, you know, I have it spread around. I've got some sitting on, uh, on those, some uh, elsewhere and spread around. So who I would not trust, I mean, FTX is saying they're going to regroup and retool. Um, I think they're done, you know, and I wouldn't trust a lot of these smaller ones. Even KuCoin is, is uh, suspect because offshore... If this market dumps again, we're going to see more contagion. And that is my biggest worry. Market bottoms are marked by panic selling capitulation. Like this here and like the COVID crash. You know, this one here was a double bottom. But 
we haven't really seen that yet. We've seen a slow bleed out. I mean, we could argue this was it. Well, here's the thing, you guys. I think if we do push higher here, we will hit 30,000, I think will be a pullback area. And then this recession hasn't been fully factored in yet. Big companies are laying off thousands of employees. Facebook has a huge building in Austin. I was watching a video last night. This guy says that um, uh, he was saying that uh, he thinks several, if not numerous public companies will go out of business in this recession. And he said uh, he's in Austin and said, Facebook has a large building. Google does too, but he has direct knowledge that Facebook has 23 floors. They've decided not to build out, uh, you know, so the, the other shoe hasn't necessarily fallen. Even if we start easing, well, easing is going to be well, when they stop tightening, you know, that probably be kind of slow down here in 2023. They probably, they don't start easing until they realize they've damaged the economy and, um, you know, printing money again, but they're not printing any money anytime soon. So we're not going to see this anytime soon. This was driven, largely driven by in you know, stock market and in crypto by all the money that was injected into the economy by the Fed. So just please get that. I mean, the, most likely. Now, some are also saying we might have a melt up here. So it's just, we just have to watch the charts and see what, he, what we see. But uh, the point here is this is the everything bubble. The capitulation has been a bleed out, but we can't rule out a big nasty drop uh, down in here that will probably get bought up quickly. But, you know, that's the hallmark of a market body uh, bottom when or was that other diagram? And I, I know sort of rehashing this more than maybe we need to, but I think I want to do that just to be safe because some of you may not, may not have gone through this before. And, uh, but you know, I mean, this capitulation has been bleeding out. We could, I think we're in this lower region, another drop down. Let's say we're here or here. And then we see this uh this is a and read this before my retiring money is lost i'm an idiot uh, i mean but this is kind of the reality of when it when it happens so you know use stop losses etc and then but follow the indicators all right we, we've covered that extensively so so basically uh where were we and then uh oh that and this of course the hash ribbon indicator i did a video for you guys it's up above in the signal chat so uh, the short version of this, the hash, the hash ribbon indicator also shows capitulation, right? And uh, when it goes green, it even says capitulation. So we've been seeing this along here. I don't know if this works on the weekly. Yeah, it does. So, um, and then these areas of red are really that capitulation zone. So we saw that as the market dropped here. Now, this was a misfire. The Previously, the hash ribbon indicator was used when you when it fires markets won't go back below the recent low and that would have been here so that was clearly wrong it's showing again here so ostensibly we won't go back below 15,500 so these just adds to our confidence you know and this here by here would indicate we won't go back below this so this was strong indication that the 2020 COVID crash was the low. Uh, however, <clears throat> this would have said that too. And this violated, so this violated it. So this is no longer, you know, in the past, it was kind of a, it was true, it held true. But uh, so for example, this buy would indicate this low will hold from now on. That's at 3,215, I should hope so. Uh, this buy on the hash ribbon would indicate this low doesn't get taken out. So that was valid. Uh, this until, until here though. Well, no, that would be this. So anyway, there's some nuances to it, but essentially this is bullish. And now we see this uptrend in here on the hash ribbon indicator. And so we are seeing some mixed signals. This is on a macro scale, not, uh, why can't I pull up my moving averages on this? I guess I had taken them off. Yeah, I had taken them off. Okay, let's go back. I want to show you, you guys want to see Solana. Let's take a look at that. 
And where did it go? Solana, Solana, Solana. There it is. And the holding tank for some reason. But yeah, Solana, um, you know, it's it's at resistance. I could redraw this probably. I don't like to do a lot of that, but, you know, new information, new decisions. So it's at a resistance area. I wouldn't be buying Solana here. Uh, we have double ERI is bearish. And the TSI is red. Uh, the RSI, did somebody say there was divergence or something? Divergence is kind of tricky to uh, point out unless you like stare at it long enough. Um, trading microchips is trading goats. Yeah. Uh, let's see, covered that. Microcaps show green arrows. Or, will these microcaps show green arrows or rather not? They should. Uh, and it depends. Depends on how much history there is. And so the so the algorithm can kind of look back and um, at least have some history on it. It's more of trading price action. Uh, Poly was an old Moonstream pick. That's good to know. Maybe we'll revisit that. And yeah, that's true, Brandon. Kraken has been is good. I meant to mention that. I don't like their user interface. Maybe they've updated it. I just found it very tricky trading a margin and even trading at all my opinion uh and do they have proof of reserve i believe they do the the guy that owns it his name escapes me he's really trustworthy mike respects him you know they don't uh, do over leverage and you know and doing crazy things like ftx so i think kraken's good uh yeah so here's a link it says proof of reserves and uh there you go so i mean obviously i haven't audited them uh, signing it. Okay. Anyway, point is they, they say that they are, I would imagine they are because the community would have eviscerated them by now if they said they were and are not. So there you go. Uh, okay. What were we doing? Solana got distracted there, you guys. Uh, so bearish. I'll take off the R RSI. So basically this, Solana pullback. I would say, here's the thing with these things. Again, I wouldn't sell everything. Selling half makes sense because of these reasons. If it pulls back, you can buy it back and dollar cost average. If it pushes higher, typically it'll retest so you can buy back and dollar cost average. So these, this is the right way to play this, in my opinion. And then if if it does tank lower, you have a stop loss here below the swing low of there. Uh, so my, my you know, suggestion, my read on that is uh, the risk favorable thing to do here is sell half. Uh, but if it pumps higher now, it doesn't always do this, but generally these strong support lines become resistance. Now we saw this take off like a rocket after I recommended it in August of 2021. And it did pull back to my entry price and then it took off. And then I, you know, we took profits and I said, wait for pullback. And we didn't get, I think we had one or two of them. Um, but Solana is not as strong as it once was, clearly. And I was watching a really interesting interview, the one I posted last night in Signal Chat with Mark Yusko, where he basically said, he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't think Solana is one I'm going to hold. You know, they've been damaged and tainted and, so Mark's a smart guy. If you haven't seen that interview, it's an hour long, but I would watch it. Uh, and because um, <clears throat> he kind of also talks about the, the crash hypothesis and what could happen uh, and, uh, and what could cause that, which is what I've been telling you guys, GBTC, Digital Currency Group, Gemini, or something else. And so, but the charts at this point are looking favorable. This is in a pullback zone. Keep in mind, this is a bear market rally. This went up 100 and almost 200, went up 200%, you guys, Solana. There's going to be some profit taking here. So more than likely, unless they have some news that they just partnered with Amazon, like we saw with ABAX. Speaking of ABAX, you know, same thing. A lot of these are coming right up to resistance. So if you guys are holding some of these, it's, you know, mark my words, take profits on the way. Uh, here's the XRP right up to uh, that golden pocket. I think a lot of these are due for pullbacks. I think, you know, we see pullbacks over the next week and then we'll we'll either see a really strong push higher. Although XRP is radar is all green. 
Hmm. Hmm. Okay. But I just think it's got to pull in a little bit. It's on the weekly 21 EMA. It's not a rocket, though, because it's not on the top and it doesn't have the wick down below. So when in doubt, stay out. I think this uh, keep an eye on these for sure. All right. Somebody had a, another suggestion, but yeah, these are all like getting too far above this. You see this open air. This is what I call it. It's, this open air is the area beneath the price and the 20 and the moving average. And price likes to have support. It's like a trampoline. See this, how it came up here and then it came down and bounced off the trampoline. We want to see this come down and bounce off the trampoline. That's what we want on Metis. Remember these patterns, you guys. Okay, uh, FTM. FTM was beautiful. Came right up to support and uh, congrats. I think it was Cornelia nailed the uh, FTM 3X long. Uh, so, but again, I would wait for a pullback to the trampoline there. So, uh, all right. Uh, what else? There was one that I missed. I think we're coming up on the hour though. I'll try to keep these two an hour. Let's pull up Polly one more time. Down in the micro cap. Let's see what happened to Polly. Uh, I can add it back here. Any other questions, you guys? I can pull up Coinbase coins again. Just there's going to be some wild ones. Polly looks interesting. So let me add that to the active trader list. Do you, uh, what, uh, when was, uh, Brandon, when was um, Polly a recommendation? Because I, you certainly, you guys, you should have an, an old, and, and this is something I haven't updated, but have Coinbase, sorry, a Moonstream prior picks watch list. See this? Moonstream past picks. And let me just, let me just do this. Keep an eye on these because, okay, Rarible, that's one we should watch. Pirate Chain. These were good projects. If they were good projects then, they'll be good projects when they come back, most likely. Uh, I don't have Polly on the list. I'll take your word for it and add it to. But I would review these. Go back through the uh, prior watch list. Let me come back to Polly. Let's take a look at Pirate Chain. Guys, people made uh, did very, very well with Pirate Chain. Because this thing, when it goes, it goes... You know, I'm glad we, I'm glad we did this. And uh, I'm going to add this back into... The active trader list. Keep an eye on Pirate Chain into the next bull market. We had somebody post because they bought it way back when Mike recommended it. And whenever that is, and probably hit here and it lost 70%, but then it shot up like a bazillion percent. I mean, it was 5, 55,000%. Um, I'm not suggesting it goes there from here, but if it gets to the old high, that's a 32X potentially. And looky here, just eyeballing it. Look at this support here. Beautiful, right? The high came down, came up, support, strong support. Where we are right now, Pirate Chain, I would, I, I like but this actually. It looks pretty good and it's, it's cheap. I mean, you could throw $100, $1,000 at this and just hold it. Uh, and um, it's kind of looking like it should pull back, but we've got a, a bell, fresh bell, kind of hard to see. All right, pirate chain, one to watch. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I would even put a buy recommendation on this for a small bag, five hundred dollars, because thirty x, not too shabby, fifteen grand potentially. <clears throat> now that's if it gets to the old highs, you have to hold it, <clears throat> but. If we put a fib target on this, this is reasonable. Uh, and, um, you know, I've added the 0 0.786 because we're starting to see some hit those. But even though the golden pocket is 266% pirate chain, don't bet the farm, but these are those base hits that we want to be watching for. Rarible. Okay, let's see overbought there, but um, we had it on our watch list for a while. You know, kind of starting to look interesting. 20X potential. 
Uh, that's a mic pick, um, you know, EXP. I'm not familiar with all green on the radar. See, this is a good time, though, to sort of start drawing these trend lines and say, all right, when it gets above here, I want to know about it. Not necessarily a buy, but I want to know about it. Front, uh, not quite. Same thing, sort of. Well, I mean, kind of branching out. December, and this is what I used to do. December 21, 21, Mike Recap pick, Mike. So I want to do this. 27 cents. Pirate chain, we did STX stacks. I know Mike was pretty hot on stacks. Cup and handle failed back in here. You know, um, here, here's what I can do. I, I This is probably not, it's not, I know it's not up to date, but I'll share it with you guys if you want it to uh, i'll make a copy of that okay copy uh, oops and i'll share it with you if i if i send you mine you guys might start adding to it uh but uh this way you guys can kind of help update it so i'm going to uh let's see make it shareable and give it to you guys here so you guys can help update it we'll make this a community in the chat there a community um shared moonstream picks list and also we'll what am i going to do here share this with you make a copy rename where is it it's this one here share list okay and there you go so you have that moonstream picks How about them apples. Um, actually, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. Okay. So let's just zip through these. Ziliqua, however you say this, not great. Polygon. Yes. Still waiting for that handle. It's, it's getting close. You guys hasn't triggered my dollar five, but it's getting closer. So polygon, keep an eye on that dragon. No Bitcoin, Ethereum we've covered. Ethereum is interesting, kind of ascending triangle here. So my alert at 17,000, I would probably be buying back in there if it can hold that, kind of retest it. Probably our Adam, hmm, doesn't, doesn't quite do it for me yet. Uh, I will, we'll keep an eye on that in the indicators. Uh, FTM, we saw that thing shoot up, had a rocket back here. Sure enough, shot up, probably pulls back, hopefully. And I have an alert set for 40, 41 cents, but breaks above that. Want to watch this again. KMD, uh, Syscoin, I, I keep, listen guys, keep an eye on Syscoin. I um, really like this and they're doing some cool things. It's a Moonstream pick. It did great in into the very, very end of the bull market in 2021. I doubled my money on this. It was just, when it gets up above the 21 and 50, which it is now, you know, this is one to own long term, I believe, and, and you'll want to do your own research on it. But uh, the Syscoin community is great. Uh, originally, uh, again, Mike uh, picked this. It, it bridges the best of Bitcoin and uh, other uh, blockchains. And usually it says this on its website. Uh, yeah, so it is one to keep an eye on. Just do your own research, but uh, I don't know who this guy is. But uh, anyway, Syscoin, um, I do like that. Maybe time to pick up some more. I'm holding it, holding some. You know, it got crushed, obviously. 93%. But on the other side, when it, that's an 8x, potentially if it gets back to its old high. But if it works, if this thing makes it, it, it can go much higher. It's this coin. Looks rare. Uh, Mike likes this one. And this is a, a new NFT kind of project. Also looks fairly good. Bearish ERIs, you know, I think we kind of want to wait on all of these for a week or so. XMR, I haven't looked at Monero in a while. Any other questions or comments, you guys? I'm going to close things down. SRM. SRM is the derivatives exchange on the Solana blockchain that also got crushed with Sam's. Mm, this is one of his mystery coins that he inflated and had on his balance sheet. I don't know. It may be done. I'm just going to hold on to it. Down 99%. 
Uh, I'm not going to recommend buying it. Certainly a lottery ticket if it does come back, but not holding out for SRM to do much. You never know. So uh, OXT, yeah, OXT, I did like, it doesn't show, it hasn't shown me much. Uh, U Network, too thin, Poly we talked about, and, uh, you know, not quite there yet, I think. Keep an eye on Poly, though. I would say above 22. So, all right, you guys, I haven't heard a word from you in 10 minutes or more. So we're going to wrap things up. Thanks for coming and hope you enjoyed. Keep an eye on everything. And uh, let's see, I've been watching this Bitcoin four hour for a pump to that 24,500. These Bollinger Bands are tightening, but it looks like it's kind of run out of steam. And then this uh, oops, head and shoulders on this. Uh, I'm going to take a screenshot of that, send to my buddy, say, I don't think so. I don't think so. But maybe I'll have to ask him why he thinks that. Anyway, uh, that's all I have for you guys. Thanks, everyone. Take